quick work for A-10 Miller. It's a knockout in the first minute. I want to end my career like I started my career, and that's fighting as often as I can. Jim A-10 Miller! He looks better and better every time we see him come out here stringing it together. I'm the sweetest thing in this bad weight division. Ricky Jamal! Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's dangerous! <laughs> Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. My Jimmy's out um out on the road handling some comedy business. Uh we're here handling handling some comedy, MMA, pop culture business. Me and my very very good friend, my trusty sidekick Dean Thomas. Matt Sarah I can be what? your sidekick, though. No, I'm I'm always going to be your sidekick, man, because we all know, man, when we go out, man, every all eyes are on Matt Sarah, and I love every minute of it. Hey, man, why do you look younger? Are you is there such thing as a filter on Zoom? What do you do? What is going on? <laughs> Yo, no, Webster. I did. hey Webster, I sh- what's going on? <laughs> I shave, man. When I shave, man, and take all the gray out, and it just I look. If I, if I called you Webster, would, would the kids nowadays know what that means? They would. Ha- they would have no idea what that meant. No, no clue. <laughs> that shows my my age right there. No it's idea. A, it, was a, it was an actor, Webster. <laughs> Emmanuel Emmanuel Lewis. Right? Emmanuel Lewis. You still say Emmanuel Stewart? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we got Jim Miller. We're gonna get him on right now because he's in the waiting room, and he's fighting. When is he fighting Gabriel Benitez? That's not this weekend. Yes, this weekend. Oh, he is. Oh, wait. Yeah, he, this weekend. Yeah. No, Rick, and Ricky Simone is also fighting this weekend? Yeah, Ricky Simone. Oh, both, both of these guys are fighting. All right, so we have Ricky Simone also fighting. Um, Very excited. They're both on the card this weekend. We're going to discuss the card this weekend. And then we're going to discuss some of the stuff we've been watching lately. I okay. Feel, I feel like, not in a weird way, but I feel like sometimes you kind of delve into the geeky stuff. Almost to like not please me, but almost for like a bonding thing with me. No, well, no, I've been over. going. No, listen, you know what it is? I've been getting into the nerdy stuff, and I got nobody else to talk to. That's about that's what it. <laughs> that's what it is. You know, I like the nerdy. Stuff. And I'm like, I like, and I'm like, I need, I need a reference here because no one else really gets into it. So wow. I need to know like what's the good stuff, what's the bad and, stuff, and, and so on and so forth. And you know what's sad? I think even your son just. Outgrew the age too, so now you have nobody. Nobody, nobody. <laughs> His son's gonna be like, "Hey, Dad, what is this? A midlife thing?" Hey, <laughs> let's get Jim Miller in. I want to. You never watched that movie Rebel Moon yet, did you? I did watch it. I watched Rebel Moon. Right. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that too. I want to hear. We we know Jim Miller. The world knows Jim Miller. Let's bring him in. Yes, good timing, producer Jim. What's up, man? What's up, man? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Now you're you, you, you that looks like a. A, a Vegas hotel room, if I ever seen one. Are you in? Oh yeah. So the fights are. Are they at the Apex this weekend? Yes, they are. Yep. Now, do you, after all the fights you've been in, do you have a preference? Do you even? Some guys like I need the roar of the crowd. Hmm. Other guys are like ah, it feels like something out of an old Clint Eastwood movie. They'd meet in a warehouse and yeah. <laughs> right. And Dean Thomas, it does have that kind of feel of the tough house. Oh, it does. Oh, absolutely. I, I remember Jim Miller. I was in, on the Ultimate Fighter Four with Dean Thomas. The first time we watched the fight, D, I remember Dean. I don't know if you remember this. Like, yo, man, it's quiet. Some rich folks watching you off to the side. Right? <laughs> because it's kind of scary. You hear every sound. I, it was. It was creepy. I mean, yeah. what do you think, Jim? Do you do you prefer or not prefer the? Uh... Uh, I think there are, there are positives and negatives to to both of them. You know, I haven't fought. I've only fought one time out of the apex since uh oh. like the apex started right Damn. so yeah yeah and i i haven't fought outside of las vegas since uh february 2020 um so uh yeah like I, i've i've had that opportunity to fight fight here at the small venue a, a bunch of times um i i do miss the crowd i do miss the big crowds 
um, it's, it's awesome, you know, to, to share those, uh, those performances with, a, with, you know, a couple thousand people. Um, yeah. but there are aspects of the, you know, fighting at the apex. It's nice. It's like, it's, you're in and out. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. You know, like yeah. fight, do some press, get in the car, go back to the, go back to the hotel. And it's like, Hey, I'm done. You know, like there've been times where, uh, I'm fighting on a, you know, a pay-per-view where you don't get out of the press conference until 3.30, you know, that in the morning. A, you know, like, that's a good point, though. They do kind of you, – you are in and out of there. You get business handled, yeah. you're yeah. like, all right, let's get some dinner. I don't know, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it does feel yeah. like uh, – is that just a COVID thing or is that just an apex, apex thing? Has that happened since COVID? Remember, like, they kind of changed it where – yeah, where they don't even let you stick around. Yeah, they ju- it's just like in and out. They they sh- usher mm-hmm. you out right away. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's it seems to take a little bit longer now that like you know the the, the all the COVID BS is done. But uh, yeah, like it's it's for the most part, you're you're there. You fight, and they they send you back to the hotel. Now, when you get a fight, now you're fighting uh, the very talented Gabriel Benavides. Uh, when you get a, a call and, and it's Gabriel, do you even mm-hmm. care who it is at this point, or you're just like, all right, <laughs> I got another body, let's show up? And or because <laughs> obvious, I mean, you know, it's not like you're like, oh, I need a Conor McGregor to motivate me to get in there. You, mm-hmm. just, you know, is it just another day on the job? What is going on? Uh, uh, I mean, essentially, yeah. Like, uh, you know, like I, I was supposed to fight uh Gabriel, uh back in february um so like i already had a camp for him you know for uh a few weeks i think he i think he pulled out uh maybe two or three weeks prior to the fight um you know so like i already put the prep in i had already prepared for him got the name again it's like okay yeah let's do it uh you know like i was hoping to fight back in november uh or december and and uh you know that's what i was asking for um wanted to get a third one in last year um and give myself enough time you know leading leading up to 300 um and you know just the way that it ended up working out is i didn't get that fight and uh you know it ended up being here in january so um you know I'll take it and uh go out and have some fun well that's what i was going to ask you so you got this um this fight now right and you had i talked to you before and you had wanted to get on ufc 300 like that was your goal and before Dana said, "Yeah, we're going to put him on," that was that was after you had already signed on to this fight. Was there any like doubt in your mind that you was going to get on three hundred because of this fight here? Uh, no, no, there wasn't. Any so doubt, you knew you, you was know? going to be able to do this one <laughs> and three hundred. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, the uh, I I've seen enough of the the fans having my back. You know, if Jim Miller's I'm not on three hundred, we riot type stuff. So. Uh, you know, it, it uh, the support's been there, uh, you know, and when uh, when I talked to Shaw Shelby uh, about this fight, when he offered the fight, uh, he said, you know, he's like, this will give you enough time, you know, a couple months to, to then be able to get on 300. So um, even before Dana, you know, uh, was strong armed into into saying that I'd be on it, you know, on a on a podcast, um, you know, I, I already I already kind of had my foot in the door. So. Um, yeah, it, uh, it, you know, like when I, when I, when I asked to be on 300 a few years ago, right. Like I was asking, that was like, <laughs> that was like four, four or five years ago that I was asking to be on it. So, um, you know, I was in a different place. Um, so, uh, you know, my, 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 my goal has changed and, and, uh, you know, now it's to be on it to to say, you know, yeah, fight fought on one hundred, fought on two hundred, and and fight on three hundred. Um, you know, where a few years ago it was like, yeah, you know, maybe I'll maybe I'll get to three hundred and and we'll call it quits. Uh, that uh, you know that that the goalposts have moved. So um, you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm feeling good. Uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm finishing dudes, and you know, I'm four and one in my last five, and you know, we're gonna. We're going to go out Saturday, perform well, uh, you know, really cement the fact that I get to be on 300 and then and then hopefully go on 300 and fight whoever, you know, hopefully like a. 
hopefully a legend, hopefully, hopefully somebody that I've been watching for a long time and, and really get amped up, uh, you know, to, to share the octagon with and, and, uh, you know, put on another display and, uh, be a part of history. Hey, you are, you're already such a part of history. Your last fight. Hey, producer, Jake, the mighty, mighty ginger. Could you please get that queued up? His last fight. Jimmy, uh, because you know we could watch it. It's a big twenty-three seconds. Yeah, <laughs> I want to talk to you about that. I want to watch it real quick. Uh, while he's getting that that queued up, longevity. If you had to talk to mm -hmm. a fighter and they ask, "Yo, I'm getting into this now. I'm twenty. I'd like to fight for twenty years. What is mm -hmm. your? What is? What, how did you do it? How are you doing it? What do you tell them?" Um, you know, like uh. Uh, I've thought about that for uh, uh, a long time, Matt, you know, like it, it's uh, uh, originally, you know, I'd had, I'd have, uh, you know, some of the guys that, you know, be signing posters or something like that, being a fight week. And they're like, had, had you, had you fight this long? And it's, it's like, ah, you know, luck and genetics. Right. You know, and, and that's definitely got uh, some influence on it. Right. But um, it's also been by design. Like I, I've, I've had a different road than my peers, you know, um, uh, I've had things happen, uh, you know, getting Lyme disease, uh, dealing with that. Um, you know, there was some drama at the last gym that I trained at. So I opened my own place in 2014 and, and that was like right when I was starting to feel symptoms of the Lyme and, and getting sick. And, um, I really had to, um, kind of like gauge myself on a day to day, you know? So I, I, I consider myself very coachable. You know, I, I think if I was on the mats and you're running practice and you say, Jim, do this, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to fucking do it. Right. But like having that, that really difficult time, I learned like I can always do it. And being the guy who was kind of running practices it was easier for me to say, Hey, you know what? Today, today's not the day, even though it's sparring day, even though it's supposed to be my hard day. I, my body just didn't show up today. Yeah. So, so I learned how to like gauge myself, you know, like when I was 26 years old, yeah, I had, I had one bad day a year. Right. Like it was like, yeah, Oh, oh I feel a little stiff this morning, you know? And like, yeah, you warm up, you go, you, you bang the shit out of yourself. And, and that's that. Where now and now at 40, it's like it's this roller coaster. Wow. So on those days where it's not the day to push, I understand, like, hey, um today I'm just I'm working on a few things, I'm getting some reps, I'm um I'm surviving, I'm I'm protecting myself. And then when I have the good days, it's like, yeah, I I I clean house, I I beat the shit out of people. I, you know, like uh, it, you know, and, 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 and like, I, I look at it even, uh, it's not only like what day it is, right. If it's, if it's grappling day or if it's, you know, grappling with strikes or it's sparring or this or that, it's also my, my training partners. I look at each one of them as an individual skill set, and it's like, all right, if I'm having a good day, I'm, I'm fighting to their strengths. I'm, I'm making it a better day for them to then me get better and, and, and push them. If I'm not having a good day, well, I'm going to exploit every weakness they got <laughs> and, you know, and make it as a, a low impact on myself as possible. So, so it really has been about like controlling myself because the fact of the matter is, is like the best coaches in the world, right? They, they're not, they're not seeing what you're feeling that day. Yeah. And, and I know that a lot of guys have gotten and, and gals, right? Uh, a lot of fighters have gotten injured on days where they probably felt like they were a little bit off. Yeah. They probably felt like, Hey, you know what? Maybe today's not the day or, or maybe it's like, ah, oh, I'm just a little stiff. I'll get through it. Coaches on me. Everybody's here. And then they get hurt. Yeah. Where like, I've, I've always had that, like, especially the last decade right is when it became hard is that it's like hey i'm the guy in control so i i get to i get to say you know what today is i get to i get to dictate the pace i get to do all that stuff that's really what it is is being able to gauge how you know mm -hmm. you don't want to let someone down all right i'll i'll train on tonight and uh, you know i don't want my coach to be upset and next thing you know you yeah 
you, you, you blow something. And as you get yeah. older, it's not so much the fight. It's getting to the fight and those camps that mm-hmm. you got to ad- adjust, you know, because absolutely, I used to just do the most, just start cross-eyed in the crucifix position and suplex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I literally blew my back out getting ready for them. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. I was training like a young, young dude. I wasn't old. Yeah. Oh. I was, I was, I was, that's when I was like 35 and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But man, you got some, you got some genes on you. Hey, we got it queued up. Let's watch this. Let's, let's, uh, don't blink. Let's watch your last fight. <laughs> All right. I'm liking the hair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's unfortunately, it's gone, yeah. you touch gloves and then you're right. You right on him. He's looking to do a jab. All right, our distance is looking good. He's getting aggressive. Yeah, Matthew, yeah. You know, you know, it was his first fight in the UFC, but uh, Jesse had thirty-two mm. between pro and amateur, thirty-two fights at that mm. point. Man, was it? It you was the left hand that, that knocked him down. No, first. Yep. Yeah. And just yeah. Threw a uh, that pocket and turn and came back with the left again. Mm-hmm. That was wild. Yeah, threw a. Uh, uh, t- a two three two, and when that hook missed, and I saw him going down, I changed that last two oh. to an uppercut, and it was uh, it was unnecessary at that point. But yeah, and hey, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, hey, it look- was already going. It was it already left. <laughs> yeah, already left. Oh yeah, exactly. It was already. <laughs> this it was a nasty knockout too, man. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you almost need to put it in slow motion. Look at that. Look at this. Boom. Oh man. Oh, oh. oh well listen <laughs> my man is straight sleep put a stamp yeah. on it. Uh, listen, <laughs> it doesn't get and after that i mean how, what what kind of how what a great i mean i've had fights that ended in the first round but when that happens what a relief no doesn't that feel great <laughs> I mean, all the hard work you know, like, oh, doesn't get better it's done they can't start it again but, right <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, you get a good payday, and then it's like, uh, well, it almost feels like I wasn't in the fight. You know, funny enough, right? Fastest fight that I've ever had. Uh, I ended up, I, I broke my thumb, like first, like real bone that I've ever broken <laughs> in my life. Uh, you know, that that uh, on that uppercut, I ended up breaking my thumb, and it's like, well, I mean, I guess that's makes it a little bit worth it, right? <laughs> that's karma. That's karma because they know you weren't supposed to throw it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Jim, right now, Anthony Smith. I just got off the, uh, another show with Anthony Smith. We want to get mm-hmm. you on next week anyway, so All I right. want to make sure I'm throwing that out in the universe right now. But right now, he's in hot water on social media <laughs> because he says that you would beat Brock Lesnar in a fight right now. And I agreed with him. I agreed with him. Well, that's interesting. I said, I said, of course he would. I don't see how I, I – and everybody's, like, saying that – that he's wrong about this. And I'm like, yo, Jim Miller would beat Brock Lesnar in a fight right now. <laughs> Do you think, don't you agree? Don't you think you would beat Brock hey, Lesnar in a fight right now? I, I know it's not going to be easy. You know, the, the, you as a fighter, right? As a fighter, I, I firmly believe that you need to, you need to train like you're an up and comer. You need to train like the guy that you're fighting is the best on the planet and, and you are not. But when you fight, when you make that walk to the octagon, you have to believe with every every ounce of your you know yourself that you are the baddest person on the planet. And you know, like I'm gonna I'm gonna walk into that fight knowing that I could beat him. Um, you know, listen, <laughs> he's probably not gonna pass the drug test. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, yeah, like. I've I've trained with plenty of big guys over the years. My my room now is most of the guys are smaller than me, a little bit. You know, uh, uh, I've got a couple guys that uh, you know are, are a little bit bigger than me, but uh, I have plenty of reps uh, against big guys, and I have strategies against big guys. Thank you. You know, um, I have. You know, I, I'm not a I'm not one to. To, to, to tout training and what happens in training, but I have submitted heavyweight world champs on the ground. You Thanks. know, uh, I am, I am big enough. I am strong enough that if I put him in a submission, I can submit him. I like now, 
Go ahead. It, it, That's it, what I'm know, talking about. He, he's he's a fucking monster of a man. Uh, you know, and if if he uses his weight, or if I allow him to use his weight, if I get caught underneath him, it's going to be a long night for me. And I know that. But I know but you ain't going to do that. There's a there's there's always there's a possibility for everything, you know. And uh, if I hit him with that too, that I landed in that fight, like even though he's a big guy. Hey, that two is that two. That, it that's it. Yeah, it's it it it, it, it hits hard enough. Listen, right? well, Brock, so. I, I, the Brock Lesnar thing, I don't know about. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know, but I do know that you'll strangle the shit out of that Bradley Martin. Who's that body? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Tommy Daskin, He's a big meathead that doesn't know how to fight. Uh-huh. He's like, do you think you could beat me in a street fight? He's asking, yeah, hey, Diaz guys that'll strangle. Yeah. But uh, and then you see them rolling one time with Brian Kalen. And Brian, uh-huh. you know, in his, in his late, in his mid 50s, and he's, mm-hmm. and he's doing all right with him. It's like, dude, this guy doesn't yeah. have a Guy has no clue. Guy has no clue. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know why I brought that guy. Well, because he's a big meathead. I, yeah, he's a meathead. I, I, you know, like I was thinking about, like, well, well, what if I get asked that, you know? And it's like, yeah. the way that I look at it, right, is it's like, because he's like, oh, in a street fight, in a street fight. Like, there are only two, there, there are only two ways that it goes down. Like, out, out, of, out of the room, out of, you know, the, the octagon. It's like, one, he's either acting like an asshole, and it looks like maybe somebody here with some drunk guy, or, or Ryan Hall with, like, I'm going to humiliate him by yeah. just holding position. And no, I'm not going to, you know, like, I love Cheeto. And he's like, I kill you, I kill you. And it's like, well, you, 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 you could, right? Yeah. But what you probably should do is just maintain position, make this guy like rethink life, yeah. <laughs> you know? Because it's like, but then it's like on the flip side, I've got four kids. I don't really go anywhere without my kids, you know? So it's yeah. like, all right, if somebody's being an asshole and forcing me into a situation like that around my kids, well, then maybe, maybe we do. And guess what? When that when that comes to play, there there are no rules. And uh, I'm wearing a I'm wearing a shirt with a knife on it because I always carry a knife. Yeah. <laughs> like if I like if I had to fight somebody that's two sixty, yeah. and he's forcing me into a corner with my children there, th- he's not walking he, away. You're getting shanked, huh? He's getting shanked, right? <laughs> that's so great. Now, besides all, you know, obviously the training camp and the training. What are you doing? You're hunting, aren't you? You're a hunter, Jim Miller. I I am. Yeah. I am. Uh, I knew it. I fucking yeah. Dean Thomas. Yeah. I took it. Dean, if I had to guess one of us was a hunter, who would it be? All three of us. Like, <laughs> I'm Jim Miller. But, yeah, it's probably the guy with the Montana knife company shirt yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, I think you'd be okay if you got dropped in the wild and you had to provide. I'd be yeah. awesome. I'd be like, ah, oh, where's the 7 Eleven? My GPS. Yeah, yeah, where's the pizza? Dude, <laughs> I, I, I have told my wife like years ago, like we, we watched that uh, Naked and Afraid, and I was like, all I'd have to do is write an email. Like, just write an email and get on it and really? suffer for three weeks. That's right? it. But then it's like, it's like, you know, there are producers and they're going to they're gonna make it look the way that they want to make it look. And it's like, what are they going to do? What are they going to do to this guy who, you know, fights for a living? They're going to make me look like the biggest wiener, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Naked and unafraid is what you'd be. Yeah. <laughs> listen, I don't know. Huh? <laughs> I was, now, I can see, listen, I can see you doing a show like that. Not me, though. I'd be a buffoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they try to help me like, yo, hey, Sarah, go get the wood. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, hey. <laughs> I don't want to be a little errand boy. Anyway, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. What, hey, Jim, do you watch any shows on Netflix or any movies or anything like that? Or you know? No, no. I, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm the type, I got to do stuff, man. Like, I, I, uh, I'd rather spend my time, like, accomplishing things i'm not a big tv guy the only time i watch movies is when i'm on a plane yeah. um okay. so like you know for me like it, it it honestly it makes me it makes me fight better like the more that i get to you know tinker and build stuff and 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 kind of play and like flex my brain a little bit and learn new things the okay. the the 
the easier it is, the, the, the easier, the grind of training camp is. And then the, and then the, then I fight better. Cause it's like, I've always got something to take my mind off of, you know, beating myself up and, mm. uh, it just, it just seems to make it, uh, make it easier to like compartmentalize it. And, you know, I, I focus on fighting when I'm at the gym and then I do other stuff at home and, you know, uh, yeah, like, uh, if I could be in the woods, I, I, I love it, you know, but like, I, I, I like the, I like the, I don't know, the self-sufficiency lifestyle. So like, you know, like I, I'm, I'm probably the only idiot of a fighter that was chopping wood, you know, splitting firewood the other day. Like here's an asshole running the chainsaw and log splitter and stuff. Yeah. Two days before he leaves for a, a, a fight, but uh, no, man, that's who you, I am. Bryce Mitchell is a hillbilly like that too, that's man. True. I know y'all yeah, get down yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Probably. I got I got a question for you because um and I go and I go to uh DC for this one because DC is a hater on this. <laughs> and we've always said that what you're doing, as many fights as you have, to have your career is just unbelievable. And mm -hmm. we consider you a Hall of Famer. And and, I, and Matt's a Hall of Famer, so I don't so and I consider you one too. But DC is like, no, he can't do it. What do you what do you think about it? I mean, is that something that you ever think about or what would you say to him for denying you of that status? Well, everybody's entitled to their opinion, right? Uh, and and sometimes your opinion's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, you know, um, it, you look at you look at any other sport, right? Like you can't, you're not getting to the to the Hall of Fame in football, playing in the league for three, four years, five years, six years, right? Uh, same with same with baseball, same with the NBA. Like if you're if you haven't had that uh, a career that is long enough, you're not making it. Uh, and you know that I I have accomplished things over this career that I don't know if anybody's gonna come close to when it when it comes to that stuff. And it's like, oh well, you know, if you stick around long enough. But the only way I've stuck around is by winning and 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 fighting the way that i fight right like uh the reason that i'm still fighting in the ufc is because of the way that i fight and 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 who i'm willing to fight and uh you know so um you know longevity in this sport where where anything can happen you know i mean we we are basically just breaking our bodies down uh i think longevity is a is, is pretty legit thing um you know i look at a guy like arlovsky who i'm sharing the card with again like i was watching this guy fight before i started training you know like <laughs> uh, i've got i've got more fights than him you know and and stuff like that but it's like i look at him like holy shit like how are you still doing this and he's only a couple years older than me. I mean, he just, he started fighting when he was like 18, you know, and like, I, I didn't start until I was 22. So like, he's got a, he's got a couple year, uh, head start on me and stuff like that. But it's like, that's, it's, it's, uh, it's something because I, I would love to see the data. I would love somebody to, uh, take a look at it and see what the average length career is in the UFC. Um, that alone. And I, I, yeah, but that alone, I feel you should be in. I mean, dude, I mean, guys have come the 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 newest, greatest fighters. Oh, and they come and they, win, you know, and you've been here, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, you've been here all through. People coming and going, and yeah. one thing is, is is the same. Dean Thomas, Jim Miller's kicking ass. <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> Listen, yeah, you know, and, and and like here's the here's the thing too, right? So like this will be forty three for me. Right. Uh, so like DC had had 15 UFC fights and in his in his 15 U UFC fights. Now, granted, he ended up getting the title and stuff like that and double champ. We had the same record in our in my first 15 fights. We had the same exact record. Oh, wow. Oh, that's and a yeah. 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 Uh, what? 11, 11, three and one no contest. Here I am nearing the end of my third Daniel Cormier career. 
<laughs> and my record, my my record is almost the same. That's as crazy. my as my first. That's you know? crazy. So so like, and in this in that time, uh, everybody that I've everybody every win that I've got is a finish. In this yeah. third one, so so like, I'm still here. I'm still performing. You know, I'm still a dangerous guy. Uh, tripling, yeah. You know, d- the champ, champ, right? Like yeah. tripling his time in the octagon. Well, like, man, so listen, you added a little bit of time to the octagon in your last fight with 23 seconds, mm. but obviously you still got the chops, man. <laughs> hey, Bella, we got um Ricky Simone who's fighting on the same card as you in the waiting room. We just all listen. You're, it's not many legends that are fighting still and fighting to your like potential, and you, you really are kicking ass. It is inspiring. Uh, everybody, please watch this weekend. The great Jim Miller versus Gabriel Benavidez. It's going to be great. Jim, thanks for coming on, man. We listen before or after three hundred. But if you're going to be on the card, if not, come back on, dude. We love having you on. All right. And congrats right, on everything, dude. You're doing phenomenal, bro. Proud of you. Thank you, buddy. All right, my Thank man. Thank you very much. All right. Have Take care, thoughts. Jim. Take care, brother. This is going swimmingly, Dean Thomas. <laughs> I mean, what's up, bro? Oh, shit, man. Oh, man, it's all love. Seeing you soon. I know. I can't wait. There's Ricky. Hold on, man. Where the hair at? Ricky, do you hear us? All right. What's up, guys? Sorry. Dean Thomas was asking about your hair. Could you turn your head sideways for a second, please? Your head. Oh, he oh. cut it off. He yeah, cut he it off. Who is what this? What happened? <laughs> no, really yeah. Ricky, yeah, now, yeah. your hair. Do you like it like this, or did you like the old type of mullet thing you had? What do you prefer? Uh, I, You know... I prefer. I think as I've gotten older, I'm starting to prefer like a little bit cleaner of a look. Uh, but I, I mean, I I, I love I, some about like the long hair and like I don't know. I just feel like such a warrior when I'm out there and it's like the mullet's out there flowing. But um, but I mean, I I between Mario and I, I mean, I I don't know if you've seen him. I can't be the ugly one between the two of us. So I had to cut it off, make sure I look good. <laughs> you know, that shit. Listen. How do you you you've been on a tear? You got into the last fight didn't go your way, all right with uh, with Song, but now do you chalk that up? And I I always ask this for guys that are kicking ass like yourself. You're kicking ass. You're kicking ass. Things are going great. How many fight win streak I'm looking at? One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we get a bump in the road. Do we? Oh, we you know now we got to just look at everything and, and, and examine my training and look what I did wrong. Or do you chalk it up as a, just a rough night in the office? Yeah. I mean, definitely like uh kind of both for me. I mean, I I'm always trying to like get better and, and improve on stuff. And sometimes it takes a loss back. Oh, we got it. We got to clean this up. We got to clean that up. But I mean, uh, this month actually is uh, like my 10 year anniversary of turning pro. I've been a fighter for a decade, a pro fighter for a decade. Uh, after my amateur career. So um, I feel like, you know, after 10 years and only having four losses, it, you're going to have a bad night here and there. And uh, I, I just know at this point I can come back from it, you know? Yeah. So what do you attribute the loss to then? If you say that, I mean, a lot, like, like Matt says, a lot of people always go back and look, Oh, I got to start changing things up. Is there something specific that you saw in that last fight? I mean, there are always the MMA. There's so many, so many areas where we can always brush up on. There's so many details you can always clean up and we've definitely been doing that. But I mean, no one, no one ever cares about like your excuses. Once you lose, if you win and you like, Oh, I dealt with this, I dealt with that, dealt with this. Then they're like, Oh man, you're, I can't believe you got through that. But when you lose and you start saying that, saying that shit, then people are like, shut up. No one cares. You know? So I'm just going to, I'm just going to take the loss. I deserved it. And, but I'm back. I'm, I'm ready to go. That's really the best way. You might want to be like on top of a mountaintop, being like, "I had this and that," and and it might and it might be valid points, but no one does give a shit. It's true, right, guys? But you <laughs> no one cares. Lost, no yeah. one cares. They don't give a. You just got to kind of suck it up. And, and I, I always say, you don't feel better really until you truly 
until you kick someone else's ass. That's why I think guys maybe even stick around too long. They're like, oh, I don't want to go out like that. And next thing you know, they yeah. go out like that a few more times. And then they're like, <laughs> so good. You know? Not this time. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Yeah. I feel that. Sure. <laughs> uh, I'm reading here that you are a new. F- correct? Oh, sorry. You, you, uh, oh, good. Uh, I hope my producer didn't get that fucked up. Are you, a, did you just have a child? Um, yeah, uh, my wife and I had a kid about a year and uh, she's oh. about, yeah, a little over a year, year and two months. All right. Well, now a year and you, and you said she, oh, she's a daughter. You have a daughter. That's yep. great, man. I have three daughters. It's phenomenal. <laughs> it's great. I love it. They, my kids, they're strangling people. They're competing this weekend. It's, you know, I'm, I'm so happy that they're into jujitsu and training and the martial arts. How important is it for your I mean, I don't know if you plan on having more children. Do you, for them to, do, or your, even your daughter, to get into like the business a little bit? Is it a necessity, or is it going to be? Oh, I just hope they they like it type of thing. Uh, no, it's a, in the Simone household. It's, it's going to happen. I, the yeah. thing is, I was like, I was like, uh, kind of devastated when I found out I was having a girl because, like, I grew up with all boys. I grew up with all brothers. I have I have four brothers, and it was like we just beat each other up all the time, but. Um, but man, I, I love it. And, uh, she already had, she had a gi, the zero to six month gi. She loves to be on the mats, <laughs> that garage setup. She hits, she hits the bag. She tries to kick it. Um, and yeah, so, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to have her do it. And, uh, we're definitely going to have a bunch of my, my daughter, my wife's said she's ready to squirt a bunch more out. So let's, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I felt the same way, man. When my wife was pregnant, when I, when I found out it was going to be a girl, you know, I thought about a couple of my aunts that aren't on the most attractive side. I'm like, oh, no. And I got a little nervous, you know. But then I'm like, then she, you know, she's so beautiful. Thank goodness. And uh, not that it may listen. I'd love her. She's ugly. My point being that once I think that God does that, it happens for a reason to us alphas. It's almost like, all right, you see what you did there? What you literally, now you're there you go. Have a few of them. And it makes you in like that protector role. And I don't know. I see a lot of my my manly friends, they just have daughters. It's crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, and I always knew in the back of my head, I'm like, you're going to have girls. You deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's so funny. But that yeah. makes that makes me feel very emasculated. I got a boy. <laughs> Not an alpha. Not an alpha. No, I'm just <laughs> hey, Ricky, when you're not when you're not fighting, we just had Jim Miller on and I guess you could guess that he likes to hunt <laughs> jim what does jim miller like yeah. to do he either hunts or if he's at home he's probably watching hunting mo- shows not only really but he <laughs> loves that you know i don't know anything from that kind of thing what do you like to do when you're not training and i'm not talking about active training i like to hike yeah yeah <laughs> chill out reading a book audio books count too anything uh movies series video game um, um couple things I found, a couple hobbies that I've recently found that, I mean, I'm training, I'm training all the time. Like I'm, yeah. I literally train seven days a week, even if it's like, you know, a light training session or something, but I'm, I train seven days a week, yeah. but I really got into shooting guns the last few years. I did a, a Tim Kennedy, a sheepdog, uh, a protector course, uh, recently. And, oh, did you? Uh, just, oh, that, yeah. That's interesting. Wait, tell me yeah. about that. Sheepdog. Dean, it sounds yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. What's up? Sheep no. Sheep no. I don't know. But tell it's me. The hizzle. <laughs> yeah, it was like a three-day thing out in Idaho. It was like half the day in the gym, half the day outside at a range. And it was just like, you know, like 10-hour days. And it was just a lot of fun running and gunning and like learning how to be like a little more confident with my handgun and just drawing from the hip and and stuff like that. It's, it's something I've always been, been interested in. I've only been hunting one time. That's another thing that they offer. I would lo- I would love to do that. But shooting guns is so much uh, fun to me, uh, especially in like I want to get like proficient with it. I mean, I'm I train in Portland. Uh, crime's gone up so much. It feels like I don't know the wheel, world kind of feels a little bit crazy. I want to be able to not only de- defend myself. I feel so confident. I'm a black belt in jujitsu. I'm a professional fighter. I feel feel really good defending myself. But you know, sometimes you know the the greatest equalizer is a gun, and I don't want to have to use it or anything like that. But I want to be proficient and be able to protect my family and stuff. So that that's one one hobby I've 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 been addicted to and. Um, you know, like there's so many different kinds of guns and I don't know, it's, it's fun to, it's fun to try different ones out and shoot them. So that, that's something I've been a big on lately. You know, what's that like hanging out with Tim Kennedy, man? Cause that guy got this energy, like a superhero, man. He kind of feels like yeah, a, 
a real like very alpha, but he's gonna kill you. Like if you say one thing wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was really excited uh, to meet him and everything, but uh he didn't go to the one I was at. So I just Oh, he wasn't there? But yeah, they had a great team. They had a great team over there, and but I didn't I didn't have a chance to meet Tim. Probably out killing people. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I can't yeah. guess nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yo, Kennedy's like a real life like Liam Nielsen. Like, That's what I'm saying. Like he got that energy about him, man. It's kind of scary. Right, well, I think yeah. he, he he's on that. He's that guy. Like the what's it from the remember the show Twenty Four? Like the Jack Brower. What's his name? Yeah, <laughs> that's an old show though. Maybe like a Jack Ryan. All that shit. That's yeah. cool, man. Hey, I love all that stuff, like the guns and stuff. But I'm too much of a knucklehead. I'm afraid. I mean, I can't fuck around with that. I'm afraid I'll shoot something off. I don't want to. I'm that guy that he goes <laughs> to put. He's teaching the class. He goes to put it in his pants and he shoots his fucking. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to fuck around with that. I'm always high. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but listen, this weekend, you big on tape, or do you just have your, you you have your uh, your coaches go, hey, check out Mario Batista, I'm fighting him, or do you say, listen, this is what I see. What do you see? Well, yeah. I think yeah. at this level, at this level, I mean, we're the best in the world i feel like if you're not doing your due diligence and doing research and watching film i feel like you're doing yourself a disservice i mean i, I mean I, I play i was a multi, multi-sport athlete growing up and if something we did in football we watch we watch film before school during lunch after practice even like it's like something that i just like learned from early on i've been a big tom brady fan my entire life i know i you know i read tb12 and you know he he, he he's on it in that way too and that's something i've always like wanted to be too it's something to replicate so i'm i'm well studied in my my coaches my training partners every i have them all watch we watch it together we watch it separate we collaborate and then we and we go to work so what we should be doing yeah 100 percent, man and you're doing something right when you first got into the arts what was your first art was it wrestling was it what would you first get into as a kid yeah i started wrestling uh at a young age in elementary school probably like eight o'clock eight or nine and then what about what about the striking and the martial and the martial the martial arts? Um, well, when I was like uh it must have been like five or six, my parents bought I have an older brother, he's only like a year and a half older than me. And okay. um the second one out of out of the out of the five boys. And uh so like my early striking was just fighting my brothers and my cousins. I have another cousin, Vince Morales, he was in the UFC, I have the same weight class. Uh Johnny Simone, also a professional fighter. So we're, my fam, my family, we're fighters. So we grew up, we grew up throwing throwing hands with each other. And then I didn't I didn't really take my first like legit striking like lessons until like later on, like until like high school, you know. But but I mean I was wrestling at a young age, I was fighting at a young age, I was watching you guys fight. And I was in my my older brother and I were in there like trying our submissions and stuff. You know, I grew up watching you guys, so it's pretty cool to be on here with you. Oh, that's awesome, man. I, I'm just reading here. This is your first time on. I you, you know, you're such a, like a fan favorite. I feel like we spoke to you before. I don't believe this is your first time on the show. You know? No, you, I think you ban- I think you banned me after the whole Rob thing, so I don't know. No, that's horrible. <laughs> that was a rough one. You know, listen, that you could make a case. That's a rough one because if I'm with Ricky, I'm like, nah, that choke was on. What are you saying? And the, if I'm with Rob, ah, the, the bell rang. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a rough one, Ricky. What if I, I'll yeah. tell you, though. Holy shit, the gas tank with both you guys. That's another thing with you, Ricky, is uh, a lot of guys, they can't handle that pressure that Marabs has. You guys were like, it was like two Tasmanian devils. <laughs> and that's what, it was like, you know, if you see when they, the cartoons fight, there's just a bigger, like, you see like the dust. Okay. That's what it felt like. Like, like. It was a, it was my first fight in the UFC. What an introduction, too. And I knew, I knew back then, I was like, I, I might see this guy again. He's going to be around. I'm going to be around. This isn't the last I see of him. And look, look what he's doing. So yeah, look what you both, uh, both of you guys. I mean, well, I mean, it, think about you 20 and four, man. I mean, if that was any other division, that's like you be in line for a title shot already. The right. fact that like you're in such a tough division, man, you, you have that one loss. Do you think that sets you back really far because of the division is so tough? Um. It, it can, it can, depending on how, how you approach the next couple of fights. I just, I know I got to go out there and, and do my thing in the next ones. And it, it, it could put me right back in the picture. You know what I'm saying? But every loss, you're going to have a little bit of a setback. I mean, I was on a five fight win streak. Now, you know, I'm not in talks of fighting, you know, top five or whatever, but Hey, I got to do this. And then I know I'm going to be right back there. That's how this sport is though. You go out there and you take care of business. That's it. You're the hottest thing again. That's it. 
it's you yeah. know it's an unforgiving sport. But it's also rewarding yeah. when you just kick enough ass, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Sounds easy enough. <laughs> right? Easy enough, right? Hey, listen, when did you realize this was going to be your path? How many, you just, when you took your first fight, when did you realize, all right, this is what yeah, I'm going to be? Like I, like I said, I grew up watching it. And uh, my dad and my older brother, they loved it. And I, I just love to hang out with them. And, and, you know, I like to do it. But, like, I always thought, you guys are crazy. I was like, hey, you guys, they're bleeding everywhere. And then. Even after high school, I decided I had a kind of like a heartbreak with wrestling. You know, I decided not to wrestle in college and then I, I was kind of not competing. And then I found I found fighting um, in a in the local mall. There was like a gym set up in a local mall. And I was like walking by. I was like, what's this about? And I uh, ended up joining. And I took it took me like four or five fights. I, I had a great amateur career. I, I was like 13 and 0, five, five titles in three different weight classes. And but it didn't take me to like my sixth amateur fight where I was like, Oh, I think I actually want to do this. I think this is like, you know, like I was in, I was going to like local, like Clark college. And I was like in class, like tapping my foot. And I'm like, I should be in practice right now. I shouldn't be fucking doing this with these guys. And yeah. And then it just took off. It just took off from there. And I had a, I had a great start. I had a great old, I was with the old team quest guys. They, they moved over to a facility called sports lab. I was in there with, you know, Chell, Mike Pierce, Pat Healy, Dave Jansen, Ian Loveland. Um, I got to learn from all these like, legends you know and then you know robert Foss will pop in here and there just because he knew the guys and yeah. but he was already in vegas and um now i'm now like fabiano Scherner and everything so i have like all the i got all this like knowledge from the old guys back in you know and they were huge in my area in my area ed, ed, ed herman so i mean mm-hmm. so so I, I had i had a great like uh upper class the upper class i got to like show me the the ropes and i got to add like my style in, in, into it a little bit but it happened so quick i was just that 21 year old young buck and now i'm 31 years old and my back hurts Dude, it's crazy, man. Wait, dude, you just wait. Me and Dean Thomas, I'm approaching 50 next year, dude. It's fucking crazy. You gotta keep, you gotta keep doing the arts, though, man. They keep you young. You know what I mean? And you know, watch, you know, Rebel Moon and watch a lot of sci-fi and play video games. I like, I'm like a Peter Pan of MMA. I don't. Know. <laughs> hey, listen, Ricky, you. I could have left that out, Ricky. We're looking forward to you fighting, man. You're always fun to fight. It's almost a sh- not a shame, but do you prefer the crowd? I know you're at the apex. Your style is such a like a gladiator fucking. No, ah, you're not at the tank. Yes. You prefer <laughs> the crowd, or you know, it doesn't matter as long as you got a body fighting at the apex. Uh, I think that was awesome to hear from you, but uh, no, you're right. You're. It is a shame. It is a shame. Like I, I, I mean, I came up fighting in like the smallest shitty places. I, they put a cage in a bar one time and I fought like in this, you know what I'm saying? Like there's nothing like walking out like a sold yeah. out arena. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, this is what I, this is what I was looking forward to when I was on my climb. So there's nothing like it. You know I mean? I appreciate getting to fight and stay active at the apex, but there's nothing like fight, ma- making that walk out in an arena. Nah, I hear you, man. Well, listen, it's going to be great this weekend. You versus Mario Batista. Hey man, Ricky, come on again, dude. This was fun. I'd love to. Yeah, Yeah, Thanks. man. Good right, talking to you, guys. homie. Oh, yeah, guys. Thank you. All our best this weekend, Ricky. Yeah, yeah, take it easy, guys. That's great, man. What a nice guy. And uh, I'm looking forward to him. Dude, he's, he's one of those guys when he's fighting, you're like, all right, don't blink now, Ricky. Mullet or no mullet, this guy's coming. Uh, he's a buzzsaw, man. I, You know what? And, until you said something about the Marab fight, I had forgotten about that fight. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> it was depressing because I think Marab was getting that victory, and then uh, yeah, I remember choke. And it was a rough thing. Of like, all right, he made it to the bell; they didn't stop it. But now he might be a little unconscious. He might not be. I mean, what's going on? So yeah, it was it was, it was a tough call. Weird. And it's not. It's neither. It's none of the fighters' fault. But right. uh, the main event for this weekend, uh, and the main card, I believe, starts at. That main card starts at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, the prelims start at 4 p.m. on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, they're both on ESPN+. Plus. And um, the main event, uh, it's the rematch. Why did they stop again? It was like premature they stopped it. or hey, but, So he, he need him. He need uh, Johnny Walker when Johnny Walker was down. And then when he got up, the doctor, come, the doctor came in and asked him, do you know where you're at? What country? And he said, I'm in the desert. Which he, which and the is doctor was like, was that? Yeah, I don't think that's not wrong. He wasn't. It's the, not wrong, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
come on. If he was like, oh, I'm in Antarctica, you'd be like, all right, dude, you're fucking. Yeah. 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 The doctor screwed him on that. Yeah. Well, I want to see that rematch, you know? And uh, the, I'm looking for, let me see who else. Oh, Olaski's on the prelims. He's, he's, uh, he's the feature. Yeah, against against uh, Waldo Acosta. Yeah. That's a tough fight. It's yeah. going to be good. Uh, Ricky, we got Ricky. So we got, all right. We got, uh, Ricky Simone versus Mara Batista, Jim Miller versus Gabriel Benitez, and then the uh, co-main is uh, Mateos Nicola. Nicola? Yeah, and Manel Cape. Manel Cop, rather. Manel Cop, I'm sorry. He's, uh, he, he gets a little mouthy at those press conferences, doesn't he? Oh, man, he's... Uh, right? He gets yo, little- he, this dude, he this dude will get into it with anybody, man. Uh, <laughs> what else is up with you? Tell me. Oh man, same old. I, just be. I'm so happy we're back in the new year, man. Because that four weeks off was killing me. So now we're back into a new year. I'm going to work this weekend. I'm working the card this weekend. The next weekend, I'm working the card, and we're we're going to be meeting up out there. So I'm just happy to be back working again. It's a it's a good time to be alive. And we're putting the band back together. Once the band back together. Don't you think that Dana White looking for a fight show is dead? It just comes back to get you like a fucking like a spinning back fist out of nowhere. It just shows up. I, you know, when we when we filmed in Boston, I was like, OK, for sure. This is the last one. There's no way Dana wants to do this anymore. And then it's then soon as you like you said, Rory calls me up. Hey, man, <laughs> I know. Right. And no, call me. we got uh, that that last episode over a million views. Well over. Yeah. I mean, listen, dude, the second we start doing it and it's like 100,000 views, I can understand. Let's keep killing it, Dean Thomas. And you said you did not like Rebel Moon or you liked it. On Netflix, Rebel Moon, I enjoyed it. You said to me, I kind of feel like I've seen this before or something. No, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't that I didn't like it. I thought it was I thought it was enjoyable to watch, but it just seemed like parts of it seemed like other movies. You know what? It it is basically if people for we're talking about the new Zack Snyder film on uh on Netflix, Rebel Moon, and it's like his kind of take on like a Star Wars type movie. This is the thing; those old like it's an age it's an age old like theme of um seven the seven seven samurai or the magnificent seven when a village is in trouble. And versus the big bad guys, and they need to gather up warriors or fighters to defend the village. The same thing, but with a planet and in space. That's what it is. It's a very yeah. simple concept. They even had a, an episode of The Mandalorian with Gina Carano in it uh, that was that did something very similar. You know, you got to. Well, get- I know, but but even with that, but like there was that one scene where the dude had to try to wrangle the big eagle and try to ride it. I mean, yeah. that reminded me of the scene in. Avatar. No, no. Or true. Remember, or remember the Titans. Not remember the Titans. Uh, <laughs> About racist football players. What do you say? The rat, not the Wrath of the Titans. What's the word for that movie? Yeah, the, the um. I think it's the Wrath of the Titans. Is it? Is it the Wrath of the Titans? What was that movie I watched as a kid? And then they did yeah. it. It was kind of shitty. It was shitty as we a kid. To, I seen the Yeah, theme. it was shitty as a kid. We had to try to ride that thing. What was that called? Clash of the Titans. Clash of the Titans. <laughs> that was Clash like, of the Titans. I remember I, the Titans. <laughs> that was a Clash of the Titans. Yes, Jake Jake jumps in. That was yeah. a good one. I, I never watched the remake. I watched the really old one. What, yeah, what? I saw the remake too. The remake was actually pretty good. I mean, the special effects were obviously a little bit better, but um, yeah, they were a lot better. But I, I'm telling, hey man, I'm telling you, man, you got me all hooked on this nerd stuff, man. I am all in on my nerd stuff. That's all I do now is I go home and I watch nerd stuff. Yeah, well, listen, I enjoyed Rebel Moon. I did not like the Obi One series that you liked. I thought it was uh, what? I thought it was a little hokey. I didn't like that they made it about that sassy Jedi chick. I don't care about her. That Sith, the Sith bitch. I don't care about her. I know they made it about. I don't care. That's about her childhood. I don't. I care about Obi Wan being a cuckold. He was being Obi Wan did not find his nuts in that chain to the end. I didn't even watch his fight with uh, with Vader. I wasn't into it. I don't like what they're doing. 
I don't know. Ahsoka, too. They fucked that up. It was good. It was really uh, good. Man, Ahsoka was terrible. Well, they made the guy. They made the guys such pussies. Like, they made, man. like, Ezra, they finally find this guy who was in the, um, he was in the series, the animated thing. And he was, like, the star of it. So now he comes back, and one, he's riding, he's riding bitch on the fucking the horse thing. Two, he doesn't want to use a lightsaber because he's a hippie. And the next, oh, one, yeah. the next episode, he's building his own light lightsaber. Listen, F off with all that. Uh, no one's a good series you might like is Reacher. Reacher's pretty good. Oh, really? And it's it's in real life type of thing. And it's that's that's I want I'm on the second season of that. That's fun. You know, yeah. I saw Dana posted about that. I haven't seen an episode yet, but I might Dana doesn't like shit, so that tells you something. Data is like anything. Data. Yeah, no kidding. No. Um, hey man, other than that, I'm looking to get new mats at my school. I got my wife doing a first MMA fight out here. Oh, I, yeah, wait, that's in February, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's early February. Uh, she wants to take a fight. She has it, you know, and she's getting real good in jujitsu. She loves jujitsu. I train with her a lot. She has three amateur kickboxing matches. If not now, when she wants to do it, I fully support her. Like kids are competing this weekend in a jiu-jitsu tournament. We're like the Incredibles, bro. We're, we're uh, yeah. But how do you go about that when, like, when she was, she's like, "Hey, I want to take an amateur fight." Do, what do you just call Lou Negley up? Like, yo, man, hook it, hook exactly. it up. I call Lou Negley up and say, "Look, <laughs> what I do exactly that." That I've been fighting for Lou Negley when I was twenty years old, and uh, I have my fighters fight with him, and he's 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 a uh, he's Ray Longo's other BFF. This guy's been around forever. I used to spar his guys getting ready for fights. And um, I, they say he's a very good, as far as pro, um, promoters go, he's a very solid, solid guy. So shout out to Lou Neglia in the ring of combat. So where all the Serras get there, you know, they cut their teeth in there, you know? Yeah, that's what's up. All right, Dean, go ahead. Promote one of your six jobs. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, you can always catch me on Sirius XM every Tuesday and Wednesday from 12 to 2 Eastern time. Or you can catch me Monday and Tuesday on ESPN West Palm. And then this weekend, catch me on a UFC pre-show and the post-show. And the, well, that's the, where I'll be. The fight start 4 p.m. is the uh, the prelims. When is that pre-show? Before that? The pre-show is on Friday. Oh, my wait, wait, that's way before that. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'll be on the pre-show on, on Friday and then the post-show, obviously, right after the fight. So just look out for me. I'm everywhere. Dude, you're a busy man, dude. I'm just I'm just showing some arm locks and stuff. You know what I mean? Today I did a little X guard off the Ashi. The X off the Ashi. It was fun. <laughs> hey, Dean, I'll talk to you in a couple of days and I'll see you soon enough. Thanks for coming through today, bro. All right, now. Well, I'll catch up with you. Everybody, Bye. watch the fights this weekend on ESPN+. Plus. That's it. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>